In this video, we discuss about the classification of levers into three different classes or three different types. Let's begin with class one. Class one levers look something like this. The load is at one end, the fulcrum is at the center, and the force or the effort is at the other end. This is the effort arm, this is the load arm, and we want things to move in this direction, right? What makes this a class one lever is the fulcrum at the center. If the fulcrum is between the load and the effort, it qualifies to be a class one lever. Now, how do we make this lever effective? This is what we do. Increasing the effort arm's length, that is placing the force further away from the fulcrum gives us an advantage. And that's how this lever becomes useful. Let's see which direction this is going to now move in. This will slowly tip towards this side and the load goes upward. That's what we want in the end. Okay, so let's uh, take a few examples and study them. I'll place a reference image so, they, so that you can compare each example with this left reference image of a class one lever. So here's an example of a class one lever. We have a rock here which is the load. We have the force acting at this end and here is our fulcrum. Right? So the fulcrum is now between the force or the effort and the load and that's what makes this a class 1 lever. Another example could be a pair of scissors where the load is placed here. Here is our fulcrum and this is where we're going to apply effort. Again, the fulcrum lies right between the effort and the load, not necessarily the, necessarily the midpoint, but somewhere in between the load and the effort. And that's what makes this also a class 1 lever. Now let's move to class 2 levers. It may seem from the name that class 2 levers aren't as good as class 1 levers. There's actually nothing like that. These are just names. Let's see how it looks. So a class 2 lever looks something like this. We have the load at the center, we have the fulcrum at one extreme, and we have the effort or the force at the other extreme. The load in a class 2 lever is at the center. This is the defining factor for a class 2 lever. Let's look at how a class 2 lever would move. When we apply force, we would expect the class 2 lever to move upward like this, thus lifting the load. Let's look at a few examples. I'll place a reference image on top so that we can compare it with each of the examples. Our first example is a wheelbarrow. Yes, this is a class 2 lever. Let's see how. We have the fulcrum here. We have the effort being applied here by the man's hand. And here is the load. The load is between the fulcrum and the effort, and that's what makes it a class 2 lever. Let's look at another example. Here's a man doing push-ups. Here is the fulcrum, here is the load, and he's applying effort through his arms, and that's where the effort is going. So you can see that the load is between the fulcrum and the effort. This makes it a class 2 lever. You can see a lot of such examples in the human body of different classes of levers. Let's discuss class 3 levers. This is how it looks. We have a load at one extreme, we have the fulcrum at the other end, and somewhere in between lies the effort or the force. The effort in, the, in a class 3 lever lies at the center, and that's what qualifies it to be a class 3 lever. Let's see how this thing is supposed to move. If we applied force at the center like this, we would see the load rising up like that. Okay, let's look at a few examples. I'll place a reference image here so that you can compare it with each example. Here's a stapler. A stapler is a class 3 lever. The load is placed at this extreme, the fulcrum at the other extreme, and right somewhere in the middle is the effort. Right? Another example are tongs. The load is placed here at one extreme, the effort at the middle, and the fulcrum at the other extreme. So these were the different classes of levers and their examples. Let's quickly summarize class 1, class 2, and class 3 levers. It's often easy to forget uh, where the fulcrum comes at the center, where the load comes at the center, where the effort comes at the center. And to help you remember, you may want to remember F, L, E. And that should be able to help you remember that the fulcrum is at the center in the class 1 lever, that the load is at the center in the class 2 lever, and that the effort is at the center in the class 3 lever. That's it for this video.